So today we start lecture 17 on our helicopter dynamics class. And I'm going to discuss flapping motion of blades which have an offset hinge. So essentially the hinge is located at a small distance from the blade root or the hub. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. So let's get straight to the diagram of a flapping blade. So here you see the hinge is located somewhere here. This is at a distance E from the root and the rotation takes place around this root. Now this blade is going through a flapping motion given by beta. Your R is the distance to this particular mass which we take. This mass is M into dr. Now this mass has three forces which act on it, the centrifugal force, the aerodynamic force, and then the inertia force. So this is the basic free body diagram or schematic of the flapping blade with an offset hinge. Now, what is different from the flapping blade with the hinge at the root is the presence of E and we will see that has an impact on the moment arms because now the moment will be taken around this point here and also on some of the forces themselves. So this kind of model of rigid flapping is a better model than the one which presumes the hinge to be at the root because most actual helicopters would have an offset hinge. So this hinge is located at a distance E from the axis of rotation. The bending spring also provides structural stiffness and this is presumed to be at the hinge. Now this bending spring is a good way to develop a simple model of the stiffness which is present in the blade itself. So to a large extent, we can say this particular configuration of a hinged blade with a root spring can be a good model for an articulated rotor with an offset hinge. Also, we can say it's a reasonably good model for a hingeless rotor blade. So let us now look at the forces which act on this element dr here, and then we are going to derive the equation of motion. So let's start with the IF first, the inertia force. So this is going to be the mass into Z double dot. So Z double dot is now R minus E beta double dot. Recall in the previous problem, it was R beta double dot, but now the distance here is R minus E. So this distance into beta is going to be Z here. Okay, and the arm is also R minus E because the arm is this distance. The centrifugal force is the mass MDR into R into rotation square and the arm is going to be this distance here that is R minus E into beta. That's this distance R minus E into beta. Of course, we are always presuming this beta to be small angle. And the AF is FZ into DR and arm is again R minus E from this particular hinge. Now there is a spring moment also now. So the spring moment is going to be K beta times beta minus beta P. And beta P is a pre-cone which is built into this system. And this is essentially a model of pre-cone of the blade. So this is something we have now and we have a stiffness term here, K beta into beta and the beta V term will go into the right hand side into the forcing. So what we do is we take moments at the flap hinge and so we get this equation here. How do we get this equation? Well, we take each of the forces I mentioned in the previous slide and I multiply it by the moment arm. So same thing here, multiplied by moment arm, force into moment arm. And this is of course a standalone moment itself. So we add this here and this entire equation must be equal to zero. Now here we see that we don't have the usual mr squared term, but now we have a mr minus e squared term. And so this 
integral is now defined as i subscript beta and this is the mass moment at the flap hinge or about the flap hinge and so if e is zero of course this becomes same as ib which we discussed in our previous lecture but now of course e is not zero so this is going to be slightly different from ib now this we know is ib but there are some problems about how to resolve this term here so we are going to use some algebra to reduce this expression. So let's start with the fact that I could write this term m r r minus e dr as this plus this. And you can see here that if I were to square this, I'd get r square minus 2 e r plus e square plus r e minus e square. And so that would give me r square minus r e because e square would cancel out and then I would get r, r minus e. So essentially I can write this term from this integral here into two terms. And the advantage of this is that the first term is actually a representation of i beta. And so we are only then going to bother with the second term next. So that's the integral which we found out. Now we know i beta is given by this. Therefore, we can write this integral is i beta plus this term. And so I can write it as i beta into 1 plus this by this. So just check this carefully. You will see that this is i beta plus i beta divided by i beta into this. So it's exactly same as this term here. Just a way of writing it so that I bring i beta out. And why I bring i beta out is that there is a i beta here and then I bring out the i beta here also. So since I bring this i beta out, I can bring it out here and I can write this equation. So the beta double dot is coming from this inertia term here. The beta term has centrifugal force content. There is also one content which comes from the k beta term. So that term also comes in here and then you have the beta p term so essentially i've taken this equation and i've written it here now one more step is required but we can clearly start saying here that this coefficient of beta and this coefficient of beta here would constitute the stiffness of this particular offset hinge plate this would be the forcing function So we don't carry all those terms, we simplify things. So what we do is we define a new quantity called IB star and IB star is I beta by IB. And then we put everything in terms of star by dividing throughout by IB rotation speed square. So I get these terms on the right hand side. So this equation lets us, lets us look at a broader view of the flap problem. So now we can clearly see the inertia term. We can see the stiffness term. We can see a static load term coming out of the pre-cone term. And of course, we have the present of the dynamic load coming out from the forces which act on the blade, the fluid mechanics forces. So new beta is going to be the non-dimensional flap frequency. And we are going to try to concentrate on that part. So new beta square is this term here. So this is the non-dimensional frequency, which is per rev. So as you can see here, if E was zero, this would simply become one and one more term coming from the stiffness. So let's say there is no stiffness, then you would get the same result as we obtained in the last lecture where we had the hinge at the root. Now the presence of the hinge at a distance from the root has caused us to get this complicated looking term out here. So let's again take a look at this equation. Now, as it happens in many cases, or I should say almost in most cases, the I beta star term, which is I beta by IB is nearly equal to one. And that's because E is very small. 
So if E is very small, this will generally be two. And in that case, I can simplify this equation like this. So I can capture its basic physics by looking at this equation. I clearly see an inertia term. I see a stiffness term, a static load term, and a dynamic forcing term. So beta P is a pre-cone and it's given to the plate to reduce steady flap moment at the hinge. Typically, beta P is two to three degrees. And so now we will go back to our equation and we are going to try to simplify it for the case where mass is constant. Now you can clearly see that when mass is constant, I can bring this M out of the integral sign and these integrals can then become quite simple to calculate. So if we do that, we get this reduced equation, which is much more simple. So nu beta is one plus three E by two R minus E plus the term coming from the spring part. And this whole thing is of course the square root. Now, if you take this expression, you are going to get the answer in par rev. And if you want to get the answer in terms of radian, per second, you have to multiply this per rev by the rotation speed in radian per second. Now, in many cases, if E is very small, we can actually write this 3E by 2R minus E as simply 3E by 2R. So this is a very good approximation in most cases. So now we have the equation of motion here. Like I mentioned before, we can go back to our spring mass system and figure out the similarity between the equation for the spring mass and this equation here for the flapping blade with the offset hinge. So now we see that the mass is one here. The stiffness is nu beta square. That's the stiffness here. There is this beta, which is the flapping motion. And then we generally have this force here. Now this being a static load, we neglect it in the vibratory motion. This is just going to cause a static deflection just like gravity. So typically the flap hinge varies from four to 6% for a typical rotor blade. And the hinge offset, what it does is it causes an increase in the natural frequency from one per rev. So we saw in our previous lecture that when E was zero, the frequency was exactly one per rev. And now the first increase comes because of the presence of the flap hinge. That's the three E by two R term. And the next one comes because of the presence of the spring. That's because of the K beta term. So both these terms essentially increase the stiffness of the structure. And so you get more stiffness than you get if the hinge is not present. So let's do a simple numerical example. Let's assume there is a rotor blade. The radius is given by 6.096 meter. The offset is 0 0.3046 meter. Rotation speed is 360 RPM, which is rev revolutions per minute. And there are no springs in the system. So straight away, I can calculate E by R. And E by R comes out to be 1 by 20 or 0 0.05. So I can calculate one by three E by two R as 1.075. So the flap frequency would be root of one plus three E by two R. That is 1.037 per rev. So that's important to remember. If it was a blade without any hinge, that was E was zero, this term would be zero and it would be one per rev. And now it has become 1.037 per rev. Now, Therefore, if you wanted to dimensionalize it, you have to multiply by rotation speed and that would give the answer in radian per second. Now the rotation speed is 360 RPM. So 360 into two pi, two pi is the revolution. So that's the number of radians in the revolution divided, divided by 60 because we have minutes. So one minute has 60 seconds. So that's the radians per second. So that comes to 37.699 radian per second. You multiply this here, you get flap frequencies 1.037 into this value. So I get 39.1 radian per second. So that's the flap frequency of the offset hinge blade, slightly more 
and the flap frequency of the blade without any hinge offset. So we see that the offset hinge introduces a lot of complexity in terms of the mathematics, but actually it has many beneficial things in terms of the controllability of the blade and so on. And of course, you do need a hinge in most cases for practical purposes. So I'll end this lecture today. Next lecture, we are going to discuss about lag motion. See you then.